Now that we've learned all the different options in the different tabs, let's talk about the next section, which is the trigger section. Now the trigger section is what you're going to be using to add interactivity, and so you're going to also be using it to add variables and other types of stuff. So depending on how intense your interactivity may become, you may have a lot of triggers, you may have just a little triggers, it just depends on what you're working with. So right now by default, you'll notice these two triggers that are there, jump to next slide when the user clicks on the next button, and jump to pre previous slide when the user clicks on the previous button. That's because in the page settings, if I come down to these settings here, you'll notice that I have the next button and the previous button selected. That means that those are going to be visible. If I uncheck those, you notice that it rem removes the trigger associated with that button. And if I add it back, it'll add that trigger associated with that button. Now you can have triggers to the next button and the back button, the default button, inside of uh, Articulate Storyline. It's up to you. Now if I come in here and click on uh, add a trigger, it will also allow me to add a trigger to when timeline starts. You'll notice a couple different things. You'll see when, you'll see an object, you'll see slide, and you'll see action. And this is important when you're working with triggers. So first of all, the action is what's going to happen. What is the trigger that's going to happen? And if I select this drop down box, you'll notice there's a lot of different options. We can play media, we can adjust a variable, we can pause the timeline, we can jump to a different layer, we can jump to a different page, we can show a light box, we can move an object. If you wanted to move a timeline, you can trigger it based off of here. That's the action and you have a lot of different actions to choose from. And pretty much a lot of interaction that you can come up with can be done through one of those actions. The next thing is the slide, okay? We're talking about what's happening, and this, this will actually change based on what you actually have selected. So in this case, media, uh, what, what are we changing? So we're going, or what are we playing, or what are we doing? And so in this case, play media, we're gonna select this drop-down box, and we can either play a video or we can play some audio. And then again, if I select this to jump to slide, it'll say, okay, which slide do you wanna jump to? Do you want to jump to the next slide or do you want to jump to a specific slide? Or you can also come in here and pause timeline, okay? But what timeline are you talking about? And it allows you to select that uh, to detail it out a little bit more. And then the next thing is when. When does this happen? And right now, by default, if I don't have anything selected when I add a trigger, it's going to use the timeline starts. As soon as the timeline starts, that's going to be when. But that's not your only option. You also have the option to when timeline ends. You can have something trigger when an object is dragged over another object, when an object is dropped on an object, when the key is pressed, when a state changes, when a variable changes, when a mouse is hovered over a certain object, when a media completes, when the animation completes, when control loses focus, when slider moves, and then also when user clicks, when user double clicks, when user right clicks, and when user clicks outside of a certain object. A lot of different triggers to choose from. We're going to go ahead and just select when user clicks and we're going to go ahead and uh, alert or let's just go ahead and uh, jump to another slide or actually show layer and we haven't created a new layer yet so let's click OK for now and it's not going to add it because we haven't really done anything but we're going to go ahead and add a new layer and this is going to be layer 2. I'm going to add a text box and I'm going to say layer 2. And so now that I've added layer two on there, let's go ahead and go back to the main slide. And I'm gonna select this object and I'm gonna come up to trigger and click on add a trigger. And we're gonna show this layer when the layer two or when this is actually selected. Now, untitled layer doesn't make any sense to me. So one more thing that I wanna do is I actually wanna come in here and title my pages. So I'm gonna say page one and then I'm gonna title my layer. I'm gonna go ahead and just name this layer one. You may wanna name it something that makes a little bit more sense to you. But now when I'm coming in and adding on triggers, for example, show layer, it says layer one. Oh, that makes a lot more sense than just untitled something. So I'm gonna click on layer one, and I'm gonna happen, this is gonna happen when the user clicks. And then it's going to, okay, well, when the user clicks what? And that's what the object becomes. When the user actually clicks the rectangle one. Now again, same thing with the layers, you may wanna name your uh, objects on your timeline. So I'm gonna go ahead and name this just button, just BTN for short, and there we go. 
So now if I come back in here, I can see this uh, trigger says show layer, layer one, when user clicks. And then under here, it says, or over here, it says BTN, and that's the name of the button. If I wanted to edit what I just added, I can double click on that, and it'll pull up the trigger wizard back for me. If I wanted to uh, change the layer that it actually gets shown, uh, anything that's uh, highlighted in this blue underline will actually select a drop down box. So if I have multiple layers, I can just do a quick edit there. So you can see here, jump to slide, I can select that's a drop down box, and it'll give me some options there without having to click on it. So that's how you add it to an object. Now you can remove it from an object by clicking on delete selected trigger, or you can copy this and paste it to another object as well. However, that's not how, as that's not what you're limited to. You can actually add it, add more than one layer or more than one trigger onto one object. So the first thing that's going to happen is it's going to show layer one, but let's have it do something else. I'm going to click a new trigger and I'm actually going to have it uh, pause Let's actually execute some JavaScript. And executing some JavaScript, there's these three dots. If I click on it, it allows me to just type in some JavaScript if I know some JavaScript. You don't need to know a lot of JavaScript, but if you wanted to get more custom stuff, then you can say, um, you can type in whatever you wanted to here. There's a lot that you can do with that. But I'm just using a simple alert. This is a test. I'm going to click OK. And I'm going to say when the user clicks. And now you can see under the BTN, which is the button here, we have a show layer, we have an execute JavaScript. Now what it does is it triggers the highest that you see here first, and then it goes to the second, then it goes to the third, then it goes to the fourth, and so on. So first thing it's going to do is show the layer, the second thing it's going to do is execute the JavaScript, but it's gonna do it very quickly. So you're gonna hardly even tell that it's gonna go from one trigger to the other trigger. So I'm gonna preview this, and you can see this actually pops up during preview. JavaScript support is not available while previewing. So it will actually not pop up until you've actually published it out. That's just the JavaScript. But that at least lets you know that the button is working and that the trigger itself is working. Now if I come in here, you can also click on edit selected trigger. It's quicker to just double click on that trigger. But if you wanted to, you can come in here and edit it. And this allows you to say, okay, maybe I don't want to have some JavaScript run. Maybe I want to actually have, um, I want some object to move. And you can select which object that is. And then you can select what path you want it to move on and uh, so on. So that's the different types of triggers that you can add. That's how you add a trigger to an object, how you add a trigger to just the timeline itself, and how you also add it to or copy and paste it. So if I wanted to, I can copy this go into a different object and paste that same layer uh, or paste that same trigger inside of there. So that's how you paste it from one object to another object as well.